I first heard Kathy speak in 2005, a year before my twins were born. And the, I just felt, probably as many of you do tonight, that the stories that she told about the importance of play in children's childhood, that really resonated for me. And I felt so disheartened to hear about how many children's lives didn't have play included. So a year later, when my husband and I had our twins, we made a pact with each other, and we said that we wanted to make sure that our children's lives were different, that they were filled with plenty of time for free play and exploration and opportunities to connect with our family and our community. So it truly is a privilege to be able to share my story with you, my evolution as a parent, because Kathy gave me the confidence and other play advocates to be able to re-envision parenting. So I'll start in the beginning. Um, as Lonnie mentioned, um, in 2010, I came across the website of the organization Kaboom. They're most well known for their work in building playgrounds in underserved communities, but their mission is much broader than that. It's to restore play for America's children. And at the time, they were accepting applications for their first ever National Park Day Summer Challenge. And they asked caregivers to visit 50 different public play spaces in 50 days, and to also be an active contributor to their online community, writing blogs and posting photographs, to both raise awareness of local places to play, as well as inspire parents across the country to get outside that summer and play with their children. So I s thought this sounded perfect. It would get us outside every day and exploring and ensure us a wonderful summer filled with play. Um, and this truly was a transformative experience for me. I grew up in this community. I grew up in Wilmette and felt so lucky to be able to be raising my children here. But it wasn't until this time that I realized all the playgrounds and the parks and the forest preserves and the farms and the beaches, all these amazing things that were right outside my door. And so I started to compile a list of all these play spaces. And last year, my children's last before starting kindergarten, at Mackenzie, we decided that this time was so precious that I had this growing list of all these places that we had only kind of um, hit a little bit of a piece with our Park a Day Summer Challenge. So we decided not to send them to preschool last year, but rather we would continue our exploration of these places. So as Lonnie mentioned in the beginning, I gave you a list of our favorite hundred places. I hope that you will um, use that and certainly let me know if there's other things that you feel need to be included in that list. But the majority of these places, and I'm going to show this picture, there's Henry and Jetty, my twins. Um, the majority of these places are within a 45 minute drive of where we are tonight. And all of them are free or have free ways that you can get to them. For instance, all the major museums have free days um, there's also the Adventure Museum Pass Program through the libraries where you can get discounts or free admission or reduced admission to places like the Chicago Botanic Gardens and Brookfield Zoo. But I also encourage you to look through the list and think about some of the lesser known destinations like the nature preserves. We found that these were amazing places to spend our days. Here you can see that many of them have extensive trails that you can hike, but there's also shorter routes for your younger ones. They offer maps and guides and brochures, so as you're traveling, um, you can navigate through those spaces. They offer indoor and outdoor animal um, exhibits. This is one of our favorite places. I don't know if you've been there, but it's Wildlife Discovery Center in Lake Forest, and this is Boris the Bobcat. And their staff there are an incredible. The inside, they have an amazing display of reptiles. And here is Elizabeth, an Indian python that Henry is um, petting, and a rhinoceros iguana. And here, Jetty is holding a um, turtle. And they also have incredible indoor children's museum-like play spaces. And they offer incredible free programs. Our favorites were at North Park Village Nature Center. Here you see Henry after he had tagged and then is releasing a monarch butterfly. And Jetty, who is tapping a maple, a maple tree and learning about the process of it turning from sap to syrup. 
many of the nature centers also have family fun days like these at Northerly Island where there's music and hands-on activities and fishing and in the s winter the kids can go snowshoeing. So each day, Henry and uh, Jetty and I would sit down to breakfast and we would just talk about our plan for the day. And our outings began, began to be called Nowhere to Go and All Day to Get There Days. And I want to share with you a little bit about what a typical outing evolved to look like. We got very skilled at um, bringing with us materials that would help us to stay at these places longer and use them in meaningful ways. And we started to develop a rhythm um, of alternating between more active and more quiet play by bringing with us food and blankets and painting materials and drawing supplies. So I want to show you just a quick example of this at the Key Nature Center, which is at, in Wilmette at the intersection of Hibbard and Skokie Boulevard. And here we are, we would just camp out for the day and bring all our stuff under this wonderful willow tree. Jetty would paint. Here's my husband and, and Jetty painting. And we are not artists, but I can guarantee you that three-year-olds are very supportive critics <laughs> of any artwork. And there's our artwork on display. We would bring, as I mentioned, books. And I think it's important to notice here that he Chris and Henry are reading different books, but to me, that's still a really engaged parent. Just snuggling up together um, on the couch or on the picnic bench and enjoying this time together. They would invent their own games, like Henry um, throwing the log in and seeing it, this was a sinking and floating exercise. And here he's also, they love to do leaf boat racing, jetty just relaxing. So again, just being together in these spaces. We started venturing out from our neighborhood into other neighborhoods. And um, we started in Chinatown, but then we went to Pilsen and Devon Street and downtown and into Jackson Park. But if you have somebody at home who loves trains, boats, and um, fire engines, this is your nowhere to go and all day to get there day. We would take the water taxi, which disembarks at the Ping Tom Memorial Playground, and um, we would play in the playground and then just stroll through the streets of Chinatown, making sure to stop at fire station number eight, which was one of the city's oldest, and the firemen are extremely welcoming and always gave us a personal tour, so there's Henry in the fire engine. But just And then walking around the stores, going into seeing the bakeries and um, all the different things before heading home on the train. Some days we didn't venture that far. We just packed up my backpack um, and headed out to the library uh, in search of more books and then stopping at our local playground to play. But when we returned from these outings, this is where the magic started to happen. The kids were tired, but they were rejuvenated. And it was so fascinating then to watch the magic of play that took place and how rich it was, um, the things that I started to see and how these experiences started impacting their play. Here's Henry coming home from the Wildlife Nature Center and slithering across our kitchen, becoming the snake um, that he had just pet. This is their construction of Chinatown. And I want to add, I didn't guide them in this. I didn't um, tell them, OK, now we're going to sit down and we're going to build blocks. And um, this was all naturally and just started to bubble out. And it was just really magic, a magical evolution that by providing kids these opportunities, but most importantly, the time and just simple materials. And I want to add simple materials. Here's a box. Henry, this is the train, and he's conducting it. This was over many um, days that they had this in our, our kitchen. And the placement of it, I I love that it was in the kitchen because then I got to listen to their stories and hear what they were playing and be involved when they wanted me to. And this actually prompted me to move their writing materials and other things that I was setting up in their playroom in our attic down into our living room. So together, when we could come home, we would write letters. This is We watched this snapping turtle on our way to Costco. Um, on Lehigh Road, there was this turtle in the road, so we stopped to try to help it get across. And as they were walking back 
to the car. They said, Mom, we have to write a letter to Uncle Tim because we just were at the Nature Museum with him, and he loves turtles. So they dictated that to me. But having the um, just simple materials available and just natural ways to be able to support them in writing their stories. Um, Jetty also loved to use the pictures from our day to be able to uh, inspire her own drawings. And as Kathy was saying, how children are natural uh, storytellers, that Jetty would create her own puppets and her own dolls and then record these stories and play them back on her videos. In days that we were staying home, she loved to paint and we would just set up a simple easel in the backyard so she could draw there. And um, this is, Again, it didn't take anything from me, but what the point of my role was to be an active listener and, and really respecting this process. This was a dragonfly that we found at the Key Nature Center, and Jetty had seen it just floating above the surface, and so as we retrieved it, it prompted all sorts of questions from Henry and Jetty about why can't dragonflies swim, and what happens to them in the rain, and what was gonna happen to this mama when her baby didn't come home that night. So we sat down after dinner and we sat as a family and we all drew this dragonfly together. And the kids started noticing more, why does a dragonfly have two sets of wings on each side? And look at all these patterns in, in the, um, what they called um, veins of the wings. So we headed out to the library the next day to get more books, and not only about dragonflies, but in not only nonfiction books, but fiction books, and particularly those told from the perspective of the dragonfly, since they were so interested of how the mom was feeling. Um, and then this is what I started to see. So not only was our adventures, did I see how these adventures affected their play at home, pretty soon I was seeing how our experiences at home and slowing down were affecting their play. So instead of just running right to the park and the playground at, um, in this picture, instead they're sitting there trying to investigate. There was a cicada, a dead cicada, and a bee, and what happened? And we're and noticing again the difference of the patterns of the wings and the cicada. But what I think is also so powerful is that the kids were slowing down too. Not only was this important for me in learning the art of slowing down, but all of a sudden they're slowing down and I started to see their persistence and their focus and their attention grow, which all those things that we know are so important. And then we had modeled as a family the um, drawing the dragonfly, so then Jetty was really anxious to come home and bring these treasures home and investigate. and. Um, draw them on her own. So it's just so easy. I think sometimes we make parenting a lot harder than it needs to be. These teachable moments are there. We just have to be watching our children, appreciating the work that they do through play, and trying to support them in further exploration. When we came home back together, so we would go on our outings, we would come home and they would play and I would cook dinner, and then when we came back to dinner, I found that our conversations changed. The kids were really anxious to tell their dad what had happened during the day. And I found a trick as, um, as we were doing this that I had, I just would carry with me a little notebook and I would record their questions that they had throughout the day or things that I noticed that I was really proud of them for doing. Um, and those I used as prompts when we would come back all together, I'd say, wow, Henry had a really great question today. Let's just think about that. Or I would say to Chris, I was so proud today because Henry and Jetty, they didn't know this little boy at the park and they welcomed, they introduced themselves and they welcomed, asked them to play together. And, um, or how I saw them climb a tree higher that day. And I also brought up our issues. Uh, spending all this time with young ones over a two-year period, there's going to be tantrums, there's going to be bad moments, I lost my patience. But then coming back together in the safe environment of our dinner table and talking about those things and revisiting them and thinking about different ways that we could have handled that, all of a sudden I started to see that they were developing self-reflection and self-confidence and the ability to take other people's perspective and um, to think about what they started to debate, what they thought their theories and hypotheses were. So as I conclude, I can't overemphasize the importance of these nowhere to go all day to get their days for my family. And I encourage you too 
to have your own outings with your children. As you can see, photography is one of my passions. And I started to create books like this one, chronicling, making a chronicle of the different, these years that we had together. And I realized that this is my story and that all families are different. We all have children of different ages. We all have different times that we're able to be available to our children in different interests. But we can all make our own stories with our children. Too soon, our children are going to be in school full time. They're going to be in after school activities and summer camps. And so we have the rest of our lives to be hurried to check our emails constantly, to tidy our house, and to be in a hurry. But we should, so we should take full advantage of this time with our youngsters, because when it's gone, we can't get it back. And I want to leave you with just a few more images from our nowhere to go, all day to get there days that happened in our community that we're so lucky to live in. That's my email. If you have any questions or if you didn't get a copy of the handout, please let me know and I would love to email it to you. Thank you so much.